Okay. Got the stuffed animals. Check. Got the box of chocolates. Check. Got the flower. Check. But I still feel like I'm missing something. Oh, the movie. How could I forget about the movie? Hey takers, Terrell here. I wanted this video to be for Valentine's Day, but I never got around to it. That doesn't mean this video can't go on as it will discuss romance movies couples can enjoy not only on Valentine's Day, but on any Friday night in. So stick around. In this video, I will be sharing with you five notable black romance movies that you should be watching with your significant other this weekend. So keep watching. My romance recommendations for this weekend are coming up. Welcome back. My name is Terrell and this is Terrell's Takes, the place where I give you my takes on black entertainers in the film and music industry. On this channel, I give weekly reviews on black celebrities and movies with primarily black lead roles as well as music by black musicians, singers, and songwriters. If this is your first time here and you enjoy my content, be sure to hit that like button if you liked it smash the subscribe button to become a taker and ring the bell next to it to stay up to date with all things Terrell's takes. So what do you say takers? Let's get started. The first movie that I want to talk to you about today is Disappearing Acts. When I say I love this movie, I mean I love this movie. Disappearing Acts is a film adaptation to the New York Times best-selling book written by Terry McMillan, was directed by Gina Prince Blythewood. It is a romantic drama played by Sanaa Lathan in her role as Zora Banks and Wesley Snipes in his role as Franklin Swift. Zora had just moved into her new apartment in Brooklyn and she meets Franklin who is the carpenter who was just finishing up her building. She needed help getting her furniture into her new apartment, so she asked Franklin if, she, if he could give her some help, which he did. And afterwards, they began talking, having fun in her new apartment. So while they're talking, they eventually start to have feelings for one another and eventually begin dating. But then, after a while, things started to get complicated as... Zora ends up getting pregnant and Franklin tells her that he's actually still married to his wife who he's been trying to work up the money to get a divorce. Times begin to get even tougher for them and they start having more arguments and fights and eventually Zora kicks Franklin out of the house. After some time goes by, Franklin is in Zora's neighborhood so he goes to her apartment and begins talking to her, letting her know that things are looking up for him. He is planning to take a contractor's test. He passed his GED and he divorced his wife. Zora comes back and tells him that she has a song that plays on the radio. After catching up some time, the movie ends with their love still there, they see where they can go from here and they play Scrabble like they did in the beginning of the film when they first met. The second movie that I want to talk to you about today is The Wood. The Wood is a 1999 romantic comedy directed by, written by Rick Famuyiwa and Todd Boyd and directed by Rick. This is another great black romantic movie starring Tay Diggs, Omar Epps, Richard T. Jones, where Tay Diggs' character is supposed to be getting married, but he has disappeared, getting cold feet. So it is up to Omar Epps 
and Richard T. Jones to find him and bring him back to his wedding so that he can get married. So eventually they find him at one of their friend's house, Tanya, and he's there drunk. He's acting out, not wanting to get married. Well, he wants to get married, but he's nervous about it. The movie goes back and forth between the three guys in the present and back to their high school years where the story is about Omar Epps' character, Mike, whose first love was Alicia. Now, the iconic scene of the wood is when Richard T. Jones' character, Slim, his young version, dared the young Mike one dollar to go over and grab Alicia's butt. Mike takes on the dare, grabs her butt, and she hits him multiple times for it. As the movie goes on, we see Mike and Alicia have gotten close, began talking more, and eventually started a relationship. Unfortunately, it didn't last, that they simply went separate ways after high school. At the end of the movie, Mike and Slim finally get Roland to the wedding. He's cleaned up and Mike sees who is portrayed as Alicia, not Lathan. And there's another movie coming up in this video where Sana Lathan is the main character of another movie. So make sure you stick around for that. And we have come to the third romantic black movie that I want to share with you this weekend. And that is Who Can Play That Game? Starring Vivica A. Fox as Shantae Smith and Morris Chestnut as Keith Fenton. Two Can Play That Game is a 2001 romantic comedy written and directed by Mark Brown. And it's hard to say how many times I've actually watched this movie because back in the day, it seemed like it was always on TV and I would always watch it just to see the characters and the topics discussed when it comes to relationships in general. I believe that Two Can Play That Game is a great example of a battle of the sexes kind of movie because it demonstrates how both sides, men and women, can have troubles in their relationships and how they handle them. While Vivica A. Fox breaks the fourth wall many different times in this film to talk to the audience, which are mostly women and girls, I don't believe that this movie is just a movie for women, but a guide for both men and women to not make mistakes like this in their relationship, to to look at what's going on in the relationships in, these, in this movie and to do what they can to try to make things work for them. I recommend that all couples, young and old, if you have not watched this movie, I suggest that you go and watch it to take something away from it because you never know. The topics or issues that may be going on in this movie, you could be in that type of situation or you may know someone that's going through that. So it's not just a movie for entertainment, but it's a guide for relationships on both the sides of men and women. Although they had their difficulties throughout the movie, they were able to come together, wave their white flags, and see, that, see the mistakes that they have made and to apologize to each other for making those mistakes and trying to manipulate the situation for their good. Don't forget, make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring that bell next to it to stay up to date with all things Terrell's takes. Number four, the movie that I want to talk to you about next is Deliver Us from Eva. It is a 2003 romantic comedy directed by Gary Hardwick about an overbearing sister named Eva played by Gabrielle Union who begins dating Raymond played by LL Cool J. Throughout the movie, Eva did not know that Raymond was paid by Eva's sisters to date Eva because of how overprotective and overbearing that Eva was to her sisters and to the men in their lives. Her sisters and their men wanted space from Eva because because of how hard she always seemed. It wasn't until meeting 
Raymond that she started to let her hair down just a little bit after they've been dating for a while then the bad news starts Eva has been given a job offer in a different town and different location and she wants to stay with Raymond the situation intensifies Eva's sister's men come together form a plan to to kidnap Raymond and to tell Eva that he died so that there would be no reason for Eva to stay in their town. So they do kidnap Raymond and tie him up and tell Eva that he had died. After hearing the news, Eva plans a funeral and during the funeral service, Raymond suddenly appears telling Eva that it was the men's fault that he wasn't around because they kidnapped him but at the same time also telling her that he was paid by her sisters to get Eva off their back. After hearing the news she doesn't know what to believe and don't know what to do so Eva takes the job offer. She leaves. After a few short months it is seen that Raymond has found her come to her new job on a white horse, wanting to apologize for the way that he acted and how everything went down. Eva then accepts his apology and their relationship is restored. Deliver Us from Eva is a great romantic comedy to watch with your significant other this weekend because it shows that anything can happen when it comes to relationships. And last but not least, the number five movie you should be watching with your significant other this weekend. And don't get me wrong, it may be last, but it is certainly the best. I'm talking about the one, the only, the iconic Love and Basketball. The 2000 romantic drama Love and Basketball, written and directed by Gina Prince Blythewood, is not only a staple in the black romance circle but a staple in all of ro romance movies in general it tells a great story it has great cast great actors and the connection is just so real and profound in the performances of omar epps and sonali if you have not seen this movie i don't know where you've been you need to go and watch this movie you will not be disappointed. Love and Basketball is the story of two friends, Quincy and Monica, who grew up with the love of basketball and the love for each other, who in the simplest terms wanted to have both love between them and love for the game as they got older. During high school is when they really started to have strong attraction for each other and it was hard for them because of basketball getting away of their love and their love getting away of basketball. While both possessed very strong skills and fundamentals of basketball, Monica had a harder time finding her place because at the time there was no WNBA for women to, to go on to after college. Some time goes on and Quincy is drafted to the Los Angeles Lakers. Monica goes over to a, a woman's league in Barcelona. While trying to find his role with the Lakers, Quincy tears his ACL after coming down awkwardly after a dunk. When the news got to Monica, she comes home to be with Quincy, but then finds out that he is actually engaged. It is through a conversation that she had with her mother that Monica was convinced to go after what she what she wanted to do everything that she could to win the heart of Quincy. So after he was healed up and could walk again, Monica challenged Quincy to one last basketball game between them. Although Quincy does win the basketball game, he calls off the wedding, and still chooses Monica. I mean, wow, that is so powerful. Love is such a powerful thing that no matter how long you've been away, no matter what situations happen in life, love will always prevail. 
we see Monica playing in the WNBA, which had just been created, and seeing Quincy with their daughter cheering her on. That is the end of my five black romance movies that you all should be watching with your significant others this week. These five movies tell such great stories when it comes to love and relationships that everyone should watch these movies because for the most part, these movies, along with so many others, have a happy ending. And that's what we all, men and women, want when it comes to love. So be sure to like this video if you liked it, smash the subscribe button to become a taker, and ring the bell next to it to stay up to date with all things Terrell's takes. Until next time, that's a wrap.